There are Tuesdays, and then there is Super Tuesday, which is possibly one of the most important dates on the political calendar for Americans. Former U.S. President Donald Trump appears to be on the verge of clinching the Republican nomination for a third time, likely setting up a rematch with rival and incumbent President Joe Biden. Both men have easily repelled challengers, despite the fact that polls show voters do not want this year's general election to be identical to 2020s. Joining us now to discuss Super Tuesday is Andrew Donaldson, writer and managing editor of OrdinaryTimes.com. Andrew, thank Thank you very much for joining us. Thrilled to be with you. Appreciate the time. Let's start with the Republican side. How do you see this ending up at the end of the night? Does Nikki Haley have a shot in any of the states that are up for grabs today? No, um, she's been pretty thoroughly defeated through. Nikki Haley's role here doesn't really have a whole lot to do with Nikki Haley. No disrespect to her at all. She's a former governor. She's a UN ambassador. She's kind of just the point of reference for everybody in the party that doesn't want to vote for Trump or independents that can vote in a Republican primary. Unaffiliated voters can usually pick a ballot in most states that are voting today. So those that want to do a protest vote or something like that, she's just kind of the gathering point for those folks is the only person left. This has been a very decisive primary uh, in the popular vote on the average over the first nine states. Donald Trump is winning by something like 33 points. He's way up in the electoral. This is why you call it Super Tuesday, not because it's so super, but this is almost a third of the delegates that you need to be elected to the nomination, right around 1,200. So normally in a normal primary, this would be the day where you pretty much know at least who's gonna win or the last two or something like that. You get a lot of definitive here. We've had definitive all through this process. None of these elections have been particularly close other than DC, which uh, has kind of a nominal meaning. So no, she doesn't have a chance. Mm. Now we can tea leave it, but no, this is going to be a decisive victory for Donald Trump in a primary that's never really been in doubt from the beginning. And will this be the end of the Haley campaign or, or should it be? Uh, it should be, and she probably would have, but this isn't a normal campaign. Uh, she's an incredibly intelligent people. The people around her are intelligent. They know that what this is. Um, now, the motivation is the determination. Is this just a protest? Is this setting herself up for something else? Is it genuine uh, revulsion at what Donald Trump has done, not only to his own brand, but also to the party? Because this is his party. There's no debate. Look how he's steamrolling through this primary. You can debate all that, but that's the debate is, you know, she can go as long as she has the funding to do so. She has some well-meaning backers that have a lot of funding to continue to do so. I would think this would be it, but I would have also thought losing her home state that she had been the governor of South Carolina decisively should have probably been it. And if I was advising her, I would have told her not to do that because that wasn't a real good look. So if this is just straight a protest thing, she may try to go on a little longer. But yeah, I, I think this would have to be it by any normal measure. But again, we're not in a normal measure. We're in a Donald Trump primary here. And I guess what would be, we'd be speculating in terms of motivations beyond just a protest vote. But are we looking at something where she's maybe trying to wait out to see if Trump's legal troubles catch up with him? Or in a traditional setting, um, we've seen contenders try and go the distance for a future cabinet position. Do you see any of that from the Haley camp right now? That's kind of the confusing part because she's already had the cabinet position. She was the U.N. ambassador for the Trump administration. Um, her vitriol towards the candidate, her rhetoric, that's gotten amped up in recent weeks, which would make you think that she may commit to not endorsing him and not having a part in it. Long term, you know, Nikki Haley's not all that old in political terminology in her year and her career, although she's very experienced. She, you would have to think she's keeping an eye on, well, there's going to be a post Donald Trump Republican Party at some point. And now, you know, the analysis of that's weird, though, because she's making all the Trump people mad. They're not going to go away even after Donald Trump passes off the scene. The party that she's appealing to doesn't really exist anymore, except in 25 and 30 percent intervals. I don't know. And nobody else really does either. So is it a point of pride for her or a point of honor for her? I think that's part of it. Is it setting up for a future political run? I think that might be part of it, too. We're going to have to wait from here to her. If she does the Ted Cruz and turns around and just endorses Trump, though, that's going to be a really bad look for her. So I'm wondering if she's so far down the road now that she doesn't have to do that, has to commit to it and just has to become anti-Trump. I don't know how you're going to be a Republican in this Republican Party after that, though. 
Yeah, yeah. You raised some some very good points in terms of uh, the Trump Republican Party existing, whether or not Trump is involved in politics. That's certainly a hurdle for her in any prospective future uh, stab at, at federal politics in the U.S. When we come back from the break, I want to talk about the Democratic side. Uh, so stay with us. We'll, we'll, we will be right back with Andrew Donaldson. And we're back with Andrew Donaldson. We're talking about Super Tuesday. Andrew, on the Democratic side, we saw a considerable amount of uncommitted votes in the Michigan primary. This was largely in protest to President Biden's stance on the Israel-Hamas war. Do you see any of more, any more of that happening uh, in today's vote on the Democratic side? It's very interesting. I think you will see that. This is not a new thing. Uh, there was an incident when uh, President Barack Obama ran for re-election in my home state of West Virginia, where there was a campaign to get somebody that was actually sitting in prison up to about 30% as part of a protest vote. So protest votes are not new. Uh, the thing about the Michigan thing is interesting though, is that was a concerted effort. That wasn't just social media. media. They were trying to get that number as high as they could. And it was about where it normally is for a protest vote against an incumbent. It was maybe slightly higher, but in terms of what they were trying to do, I think it actually failed. It didn't really show a huge jump. Now. We know President Biden has really not good approval numbers. So what does that mean is what all this really boils down to. Is he vulnerable? Well, Donald Trump's on the ticket. So yes, Donald Trump could win this election. There's no doubt about that. There's a lot of issues in the Biden presidency that bothers certain voters, even Democratic voters. We have to keep in the perspective, though, of why Joe Biden is president. Joe Biden is president because he's not Donald Trump. That was his big selling point is I'm not Donald Trump. And he won and he defeated Donald Trump. Now his selling point is I'm not Donald Trump, but he also has four years of his presidency that he has to stand on his own record on top of that. Plus the Trump stuff has just been so bonkers that it kind of floods the system. I think we're off the map on things like protest votes and things like that, because when this thing really gets down to it, are the Democratic voters going to come home for Joe Biden or are they going to sit home and not vote at all? That's the real question, because I don't think they're going to go to Trump. That's the question. And if enough of them do it and Trump turns out his base, yeah, Joe Biden could be defeated as an incumbent president, as loony as that sounds and as unpopular as Trump. Remember, Trump's not super popular either. He's just really, really got a solid base. So the margin of error is pretty slim mm -hmm. for President Biden. And what about those who are running against Biden on the Democratic side? Do any of them stand a chance for any type of major breakthrough or, or even making a dent to signal further to the Biden administration that some of their base is, is irritated with the president? Not really, not with this current group. Of course, there was a congressman that ran, Marianne Williamson, who's a TV personality, ran again, uh, actually stopped running and then announced she was going to run again after the Michigan thing you just mentioned. No, um, in fact, the, technically, the Democratic Party is not even actually having a primary for all practical purposes because they have an incumbent president. This goes to what we were talking about with Trump. Though. This is really weird. This is almost an incumbent versus incumbent election, really, when you break down to it. Mm -hmm. The Democratic Party in the long run is getting ready to go through some things. Joe Biden's probably the last consensus of the old coalition. Remember, he was losing his primary uh, in 2020, and then they got to South Carolina, especially the black voters came out strong for him. The traditional base of the Democratic Party after they got through those first couple primaries ran not walk to the polls, and President Biden won election with record setting numbers. So he can get the votes to win can he do it again? Because he's probably going to have to better that number again to win again. But no, he doesn't have serious opposition. But once Joe Biden passes off the scene, the Democratic Party in America is going to go through some things because I don't think they have anybody else on the bench that can get the coalition he got to win. He's really the last of that generation in multiple ways. And the Democratic Party is going to do some soul searching on what kind of a party they're going to be, how progressive they're going to be, things like this. You just mentioned the dissent over the Israel Hamas thing. That's a that's a split issue for the old Democratic Party. What's the new Democratic Party going to do? That's something to keep an eye on if he loses this election. But even if he wins it, the second he wins, he's a lame duck president and the party's going to start trying to jockey for a position for the next time around. Yeah, and some commentators have said that that the potentially California Governor Gavin Newsom is that consensus Democrat. What do you make of that argument? He'd like that. Uh, he's tried really hard to position himself that way. He has some stuff 
uh, in the pro column for him. He's telegenics, charismatic, he's a good speaker. He does go outside the box. He did the Fox News debate with Governor DeSantis, things like that. Uh, the party itself sees him maybe a little differently. I don't know if he'd get the full consensus. He comes from California, and this is important because remember, Vice President Harris also comes from California. California is a rock solid Democratic state. So the polls that come up through that system uh, sometimes don't really fare nationally quite as well. Like VP Harris, she didn't even get it into her calendar year of her run for the presidency, although she's now the vice president. It's a different beast out there because the party is a one party system and they can kind of pick and choose who they want. When they go nationally, mm -hmm. how do they play? That's why you see Newsom all over the media. He's work, he's cognizant of that and he's working really hard at that. I don't know. It's a weak bench for the Democratic Party right now, who they're going to get. Of course, VP Harris is going to be in that mix. Um, the governor of Illinois has a lot of money. He's kind of pretty much signal he wants to run. And then you got a lot of governors and senators that really want to go to it. It's going to be very, very interesting. He wants that. Can he play nationally? That's always the key to these people that want to make the step up to a presidential run. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Always appreciate it. Thank you, sir.